What's going on, YouTube? Welcome back to another episode of Smite Meta Casual News. In today's episode, we ask the question, should high res refund gems on remodeled gods? Then we take a look at those skins and gods in question. Also, we take a little highlight preview of the new patch. All that and a little bit more. Once again, my name is FG3000. You're you, and here comes the news. First up in news, let's talk about remodels and refunds. So circulating the Smite forums and the Smite Reddit is basically this. If you buy a skin from hi res and they decide to remodel it in a way, are you entitled to a refund? Well, I'll tell you what the terms of service say. The terms of service say no. Basically, when you buy something from hi res that sale is final. So if they decide to change Grand Slam Hercules into uh, a polo player or a basketball player, they can do that and they don't owe anybody any money. So let's get away from the legally, the legally binding stuff. Let's talk about just basic consumer goodwill. Should hi res if they change a model on a premium skin or even a god, should they automatically just refund everybody's money and then allow them to repurchase the god if they like it or purchase something different? Um... I can see the thought behind that. Now I'm gonna try to think of I'm gonna try to think about this from the consumer standpoint as well as the business standpoint. So as a consumer, that's nothing but positive. You know, you have the peace of mind knowing that if you buy something from high res, it doesn't matter when it changes, you will have the opportunity to get your money back, rebuy it if you really if you approve of it, or buy something else if you don't approve of it. So from a consumer standpoint, it's great. From a high res standpoint, it's not as awesome. And I know the the argument is this. The gems aren't leaving, right? The gems are just being refunded. You, you're not getting your cash back. The gems are going to go right back to high res. And I agree with that. However, high res still hypothetically loses money in that scenario. And if you think about it like this, if they didn't offer you a refund, you would still need to buy gems to buy that something else that you wanted to buy, right? If you decide not to rebuy the skin and you're going to buy something else, that means you wanted that something else which means you would have eventually bought gems for that something else, which means that is a lost sale for high res. And that's just kind of a roundabout way of thinking it. And I don't really think there is a good answer for both. Um, I really don't think it's a good idea for high res to go across all their million plus accounts and then just refund Hercules or refund Kali. Just do that across every single account. I think it's just too messy. Um, what I would like to see that's kind of good on both high res's part and the consumer part, I would like to see some type of uh, token feature, some type of like basic refund on your account. So let's say once a year, you get three refunds on your account for remodels, right? This is just strictly for remodels or redesigns of gods. You get three per year. So the next year, you get another three. The next year, you get another three. So in that year, you can basically refund a remodel. So if Bastet comes out and you don't like Bastet's remodel, it's just not your style, you can use one of your refund tokens to refund that. And the same thing with Hercules. You didn't like Hercules? All right, I'm going to use my token number two to refund that. I, I feel like it, it's it's room for less abuse and high res can kind of keep a better eye on that kind of thing. Either way, it's kind of a slippery slope because if high res if high res does what the people on Reddit and the people in the Smite forums are saying, it's a slippery slope. So they refund everybody's Hercules on their accounts. It gives everybody their gems. They give everybody their gems for Grand Slam Hercules. They give everybody their favor or their gems that they spend for the gold skin. What's next? Right? Then you got to do it for Kali. Then you got to do it for Agni because you don't like his walk anymore. Then you got to go back and do it for Hell because maybe you like that pixelated mess that the Hell used to be. Or then maybe you have to go even further. What if I don't like how detailed Ares is right now? Ares didn't really get a remodel, but you know what? I don't really like how he looks, high res. I want a refund. I mean, it's a slippery slope. I, I, I really think a token feature or a set number of refunds a year is probably the best way to approach this. It's kind of good on both sides. I do not believe refunding everybody blanket across all accounts is a good idea. But once again, that's just my opinion. I would love to hear yours. Leave them in the comment section below. Next topic. So let's talk about the controversy itself. Grand Slam Hercules, here he is. Um, I'm just going to be honest. This is probably one of the worst looking skins in the game right now. It just doesn't work anymore. Um, he has a super tiny head, oblong arms. His walk is just really, really bad. And it's and it's not because, I mean, this is not a new model, right? This is, Her Grand Slam Hercules has been in the game for a long time. Um, the reason why it looks so terrible is because they adapted the brand new Hercules skeleton or, or model or whatever you want to call it 
onto a Grand Slam Hercules frame, and it just it just doesn't look good. His arms are probably the worst part, or his tiny head is another worst part. I mean, it just doesn't look like it flows. It, and look at his arm right there. Ah, this is not a good skin. I hate to say it. I don't recommend it. If you already have it, great. I wouldn't go out there and buy it unless I, I feel like high res is going to update this. I just feel like they are. I have no proof, but that's what it is. That's Grand Slam Hercules. Let's look at something better, shall we? Now, switching gears is something that is completely awesome. Now, I'll be honest, when I saw the screenshots of this brand new Shibalanke skin, I wasn't really sold on it, but when I played it in game today, this skin is actually really, really well done. Um, for 600 gems, you get both skins, both of the recolors, you get a ward skin, and if you have the Shibalanke's voice pack already, you get an updated voice pack as well, and the voice pack has so many cool little football. Oh my, oh, it's great. It is great. This skin makes up for the Hercules skin, in my opinion. At first, I didn't think it would, but this is actually a great skin. Go out there and get it. Check it out. What better way to spend Friday the 13th than killing people with chalk? I agree. Slaughterhouse Chalk was released. Before we talk about the skin, let's talk about, talk about the promotion. This skin is 600 gems, but you can get a 150 gem refund if 1 million people are killed with chalk. Slaughterhouse Chalk. Very specific. And, of course, there's some tiers below that as well. But we're shooting for a million, right? Um, pretty awesome. Hi-Rez didn't have to do that. Once again, Chibalanke, this chalk skin, really, really good will towards the consumers. This is why I kind of let them get away with that Grand Slam stuff every now and then. But we're not going to go back to old subjects. Let's talk about chalk. Now, this skin in particular is not my cup of tea. The more you kill people, the bloodier he gets. I'm going to be I'm gonna be lame. It's a little too gory, too bloody for me. <laughs> I know, whatever. Make fun of me, that's fine. Um, but I can definitely respect that this is actually a really well done skin in the vein of Slaughterhouse or Splatterhouse, which w was the game I was on uh, TurboGrafx-16 long, long time ago. Half of you people don't even know what TurboGrafx-16 is. Um, also, Friday the 13th um, and Michael Myers, all that kind of stuff. Very, very good skin if you like this kind of thing. If you like Chalk, this is probably one of the better skins in the game. Like I said, it's just gore factor is too high for me i'm lame i know i, I just want to get to the next video or next next segment moving on and before we get into the pats let's talk about a couple of cards that were updated athena new card looking good and then iron gaming thor was in the files as well so this hasn't been released just yet um iron gaming uh, actually runs tournaments for smite pretty often so i wouldn't be surprised if this is kind of like a convention skin type of thing if you enter in an iron gaming um tournament you get this skin for free i don't know the details just yet but this was found in the file so thor looks phenomenal looking forward to seeing that skin next topic all right so let's talk about some of the highlights of this patch of course hercules was released we talked about so many hercules things i don't want to talk about hercules anymore but he has a brand new model he has a brand new voice pack has the same exact skill effects um which is kind of sad but all in all, Hercules himself looks pretty good. I'm really unhappy about Grand Slam Hercules. I'm not super unhappy about the other, the the new default Hercules. I do think he lost a bit of his personality. He kind of looks generic. His voice pack is a little, it's not as fun. Like when I think of the old Hercules, he has this huge smile on his face. He wants to jump in the middle of the battle. He wants you to hit him. It's like he's having a fun time fighting where this Hercules is a lot more serious. He's a lot more brutish. And maybe that's what they're going for. I like the other Hercules. He just seemed like a more fun guy to hang out with, but whatever that's hercules i'm tired of talking about hercules so let's talk about some other parts of this patch so deserter system changes one of my favorite parts of this patch let me tell you a story though before i tell you about deserter system i was in a game i was like two and three i wasn't doing fantastic but i wasn't doing awful let me tell you somebody in the solo lane just started going off and not just to me like our entire team BMing all of us like hardcore saying how much better he is compared to us and he is going to afk in the fountain good luck noob see ya and he did he afk in the fountain and just left and i was like okay interesting so you know how fg is i'm curious i'm like i want to know how much better this guy is than me i want to know so i go to smite game i look up his profile 262 conquest wins you know not not you know, not a big deal. You can still be you can still be really, really good at Smite at only 262 wins. Not gonna take that from him. But then I look at his leaves. 
121 leaves. And I'm like, are you serious? How do you get that many leaves on that many games? I, I was just dumbfounded. So hopefully this new deserter system kind, kind of just makes people leave a little bit less. You're still going to have leavers, but hopefully this deters some people. So what is it? Today, if you leave a game, you get a 30-minute deserter debuff where you can't enter a game for 30 minutes. Now, within that same 24-hour period, if you leave again, that 30 minutes turns to 60 minutes. You leave again, it's 120. Leave again, it's four hours. Leave again, I think it even goes up to a day. So I'm hoping that this deters people because before you got deserter, you didn't care. You wouldn't got a sandwich and a drink. And you came right back and you were playing Smite like nothing happened. If you keep doing that throughout, a, throughout the day, this is going to hurt you. You know, as much as a video game can hurt you, this is going to hurt you, and I'm happy for it. And hopefully they kind of look at people that have 121 leaves on their account. There's a, And if you look at the, the chat log, I'm sure that person is being more people than just us. So hopefully high risk starts looking into more of these reports as well as this system kicks off. I'm super excited about it. Also, voice packs. And we've talked about voice packs multiple times with Smite Meta Casual News about people, and especially this kicked off with um, Ninja Nemesis. So a lot of people were not happy with her voice pack. They wanted to, to, they wanted to use her default voice. Finally, you have that ability to do that. So if you like Ninja Nemesis, but you don't like her voice, you can use default Nemesis voice. Or if you like default Nemesis, but you want the Ninja voice, you can do that also. So very, very awesome. Quality of life change. High res is, I mean, they listen to us, right? Everybody wants to say bad things about high res when they mess up. But people forget when they do things like this. This is awesome. It came really, really quick considering that it wasn't really that big of a deal until Odin and Nemesis came out. And we got it a patch or two after that. So very, very awesome. Thank you, High Res. Now, let's talk a little bit about ELO. There have been some changes in the way that High Res handles ELO in the pregame lobby. And if you're not familiar with ELO, it's not... You know what? It's not terribly efficient in games like this, I'll be honest, but it's the best thing we have. So in a nutshell, this is supposed to basically group you into how good you are. So if you're a really, really good player, you might have, I'm just going to use fake numbers. You might have 100 ELO. If you're really, really bad, you might have 10 ELO, right? That's basically how it works in a nutshell. In the pregame lobby, the people with the highest ELO were at the top. The people with the lowest ELO were at the bottom. Now this caused BM straight from the beginning because if you're in the if you're in the pregame lobby and your bottom elo person calls jungle, which is arguably one of the most important roles, it, you know, arguably one of the most important roles. I'm not gonna get in that conversation. Is jungle? People would BM you immediately, like, oh great, GG, bottom elo jungle, right? And you don't need that. And I'll tell you the reason why. And I'm only talking about normals right now. We'll talk about ranked in a second. In normals, sometimes the elo range was next to nothing so let's talk about an example here top elo could be 100 and bottom elo could be like 97 and this happened pretty often so you're not really that much better than the, the than the bottom elo person but because there's no numbers displayed in the pregame lobby people had no idea they just assumed the worst like up oh, he's bottom he's terrible he's a noob he's not good he can't jungle so I'm really, really happy that this is gone because, like I said, the ELO spread wasn't really as big as people thought it was. Very, very good. See you later, ELO order in normals. Now in ranked, it's a little bit different. So in ranked, people liked the ELO order because it gave it gave structure to rank, right? If you're a top ELO, you got top pick. Second, you got the next pick. Third, you got the next pick. So if you if you were top pick and you wanted Hunter, you didn't have to run into the lobby real quick and spam out Hunter in the lobby chat before someone else did. And three people called jungle. You didn't have that in rank. It was very, very structured. Top elo, I get Hunter, the end, right? The cons of that, and this is, and, and like I said, I'm not going to... I'm not going to tell you what my opinion is on this because I don't play enough ranked. So my opinion, it really isn't that valid. But the cons of that system is this. Let's say you are brand new to league. You get in there, you're bottom elo. All right, that's fine. You get stuck with support. All right, you know how to play support, but you are so much better at hunter. Like, you're an infinitely better hunter. You're a pretty crappy support, but, you know, you've been playing it a little bit. Well, your elo is now dependent on your support play. 
right? You could be stuck in an elo hell because you're constantly playing support. You're constantly playing, what else, like solo, or you're constantly, constantly playing mid. You can never get that hunter role because all the top elo people are always picking it. So your elo is not really conducive to how good you are as a player because you're always stuck at the very, very bottom and you don't get to play the roles that you're really, really good at. And eventually, if you play enough games, you kind of just weed that out. But if you're not, if you're only playing the minimum amount of games, you might find yourself stuck in an elo hell, which is really, really unfortunate. So the plus side to randomizing elo in ranked is this. Everyone gets a chance to play Hunter. Everyone gets a chance to play the jungler. Everyone gets a chance to be that top elo person and get to call and, and, and be able to learn how to ban or be able to learn how to play their hunter in a ranked environment or mid or whatever. So I see the plus sides. I see the cons. I don't think we can kind of look. We can't look at this just yet because it's too new. People are there's too many knee jerk reactions going on. So let's let the let's let this sit in for a couple of weeks. Let's get back to it and see for sure how this looks. I don't know if it's going to be negative or positive. It sounds positive on paper, but there are some negatives. Are there more positives than negatives? That remains to be seen. We'll take a look at that later on. Siege. Finally got the Juggernauts. Maybe FG will start playing Siege again. Who knows? I got to at least see the Juggernauts, so I'll probably play Siege at least a couple of times. They finally got rid of... They've, getting, uh, they've gotten rid of the Silver Fury, so they have a wild Juggernaut that spawns, which is awesome. And the Siege weapons have been replaced with Siege Juggernauts, so I at least have to jump in there and check it out. Um, one pretty... I, I don't want to say it's not that big... It's not as big of a change that then people are making it out to be. You can no longer buy the basic ward in Siege. The little cheap $50 wards, you can't buy those in Siege anymore. You can only buy the Sentry wards, which are the more expensive ones. And the reason they did that is because one player, for the most part, you can kind of throw down two wards and kind of cover most of the spots that you're going to need to cover. And it was really cheap. 100 gold, bam, bam, I got vision on both sides, done. Right? And if you went back to the base, you could cover it even more, right? Because the map is not that big. And high res didn't really like that. They wanted to reduce how easy it was to cover the map in wards. Um, I think they probably could have did it better. Maybe they just restrict people that just having one ward. I don't like forcing everybody to only buy sentry wards because that's not something that translates into other modes. That's my that's my biggest beef with that change. That doesn't translate into conquest. Like you can buy any wards you want in conquest. And the last time I checked, I thought people that thought high res wanted people to transition into conquest even more. They wanted people to not be scared of conquest anymore. If you if you do these things where things are just different, like, oh, in Siege you can't buy this and you can't do this, but in Conquest you can, it's like they're playing a, a totally different game when they come to play Conquest. So I don't really agree with that uh, with that change, but we'll see how it pans out. Once again, I'm not a, I'm not a siege expert anymore. I used to be, but high res doesn't want me to be. <laughs> Next topic. So Janus or Yanis or whatever. He's the only guy that really got any real nerfs and buffs as as far as his patch goes. It was a bunch of quality of life changes on a bunch of the gods, but Yanis has been changed a little bit and maybe i will give him another try so you can no longer jump over his portal which is cool um they've adjusted his two a little bit his lane clear so i'll have to try that out and see how i like it maybe there will be a janice video coming who knows and finally his ult isn't as terrible because now he can move and aim while channeling his ability and he's also cc immune it's still just as slow but he can move and he's cc immune with it so Maybe Yanis is a little bit better than he was before, and if you can hit that thing in max range, none of the damage was nerfed. So this is nothing but a buff for him. Casting time still kind of sucks, but CC immunity, he can aim it, and it still has the damage that it, it, it had before? He might be alright. He might be okay. But other than that, that is all for the patch. I think I covered everything. That's a 20 minute long video. I apologize. Hope you guys enjoyed, though. My name is FG3000. This is Smite Meta Casual News. I did that in the wrong order, but you know what? You know how I do my outros. I will see you next video. See you later, guys.